Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Darshana. For those of you who don't know me, I love making DIY home decors, boho theme decors, canvas paintings, um, room decors. So if you're interested in all such good stuff, do hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon to always be notified of my new videos. So as you guys have already seen in the intro, today's video is all about dream catchers. And this video about the dream catcher is a little special because it's also about a tree of life. So I have managed to design a tree of life within the dream catcher and what dream catchers are or what the tree of life is. I have looked it up myself and I have explained a little bit that I have understood in the video as well. So stay tuned for that. So this dream catcher that I made, I loved it so much that I decided to hang it in my living room and it's actually right there. I think you guys can see it. I think it really goes well with the theme of the house as well. Um, I'm going to give you a nice close up shot in a second. So yes, this is the dream catcher that I have managed to make and I think I really like the tree of life within the dream catcher where you can actually see the roots, you can see the trunk and the tree itself and I think the dream catcher has turned out nice especially because I've managed to get this feathers in that nice U shape so um, I think I really like um, having such natural material it also adds to the bohemian look that I'm hoping to get for my um, living space and um, if you are curious to know how I got this done stay tuned so before we move ahead with this video I want to make an announcement and a little celebration with all my subscribers we have hit the 100 plus mark of my subscribers and I'm so thankful and grateful to all you guys who have subscribed to my channel and made this happen. We are not that far from hitting the 1k subscribers and I'm sure that we are heading in the right direction. Stay tuned and uh, promise to bring in a lot more exciting videos and entertaining DIY projects and if you have any suggestions on um, some DIY projects you want me to give it a try um, do um, let me know in the comment section I'm happy to try it out and I do read everybody's feedback so if you have any questions any comments feel free to drop it in the comment section so let's look at the supplies you need for this project so I'm using an embroidery hoop and this embroidery hoop is 25.4 centimeters diameter and then I'm taking some thin jute rope next I'm taking some beads so I got these from Hobby Lobby so I picked a couple from um, different shapes and colors so you can buy that and I got some pair of scissors I'm using a glue gun and then I'm also using some thick rope and the last thing you need is some feathers I have added that in the later part of this video so the first thing you need to do is start off gluing the thick rope around the embroidery hoop and I like to actually make a couple of rounds before I use the glue gun so you don't have to necessarily use the glue gun for every single round that you um, go around the hoop so I did that for the entire hoop so a little bit about dream catchers what is the meaning of dream catcher so dream catchers became widely popular during the 1980s and it was considered as a very common um, craft item or like a jewelry piece they were made with wooden hoop and usually had a web or a net woven pattern using some natural fibers and they usually had beads and feathers hanging from the hoop while the more modern dream catcher comes in various forms authentic ones are generally only a few inches in size and 
they're mostly handmade with natural materials similar to the one that we are trying to make today but there are other forms of dream catchers that are more modern so so the dream catcher that we are going to make today is going to be a combination of a dream catcher that's more traditional and also tree of life so once you reach the end of the hoop you want to make sure that you seal off the loose ends properly like I'm showing here so next you can go ahead and take the thin rope that you have and measure out how long you want your dream catcher to turn out eventually and then take 2.5 times that length and this will just help you to not stick with the measurements I have but if you want to know what measurements I have taken then I had taken 80 centimeters long um, rope which was 2.5 times the actual dream catcher that it turned out eventually and I took 12 such ropes So once I had all my ropes laid out, I start taking each of these strings and I join the ends, the two ends of each of the string and then tie a knot around the hoop. And what I want to do is spread out all the 12 ropes around half of the or the semicircle of the embroidery hoop, which would turn out to be the branches of the trees eventually. So as you can see here, I am joining the two ends of the string and then I'm taking that string around the embroidery hoop and passing the ends of the string that I have in my left hand through the loop that is created using that string and then pull the two ends. So you can tie the similar knot using all the 12 ropes on your embroidery hoop and if the knots are not secured enough you can just glue it um, to the places where you want the loops to stay. So this is how I spread out my 12 ropes and as you can see it's almost using half of the circle so it's almost spread it out to the semicircle of the embroidery hoop. So once you lay this down this is where your creativity can start. So you can either do some macrame knots, you can check out my macrame videos and use those knots. Um, if you wish, you could buy some other colorful beads if you'd like and put those beads in these ropes or you can also branch them, you know, however you want. You can group them however you want. But in this video, what I did was I used the smaller beads first and I left the first rope and took two strings at a time and passed the smaller beads through the two strings and I pretty much did that till I reached the end. Now since we took 12 strings and we tied this knot that eventually gives us double the number of strings we've taken so we should end up having 24 strings to play around at this time. And since we left the first string and didn't pass any beads through it, we would also end up with an extra string at the end that wouldn't have any beads to be passed through. Honestly, I was just looking for something that made sense to me. So there wasn't any said pattern in my head that I was 
trying to implement and I was just going with the flow so like I said you can get really creative at this place and play around you know if you don't like something like this you can do something else and there are so many ways to make this look pretty and um, exciting so yes you should definitely try making one of these and share your experience your pictures follow me on instagram let me know how it turned out i would really be happy to see um, your diy projects so feel free to comment and let me know if you have any questions and um, if you did try one of these i would be really happy to hear from you guys your experience so as you can see here my last string does not have any beads going through it and that's what i was explaining to you guys earlier and once i went through the first round of adding the beads i wanted to add some more elements to this and i thought i should go around alternating the strings and uh, basically adding the same beads again to sort of give that alternate look for the tree of life so the meaning of dream catchers and the beliefs surrounding the construction of dream catchers really originate from native americans the dream catcher is more like a protective talisman that was used to protect people from nightmares and bad dreams so the charm was usually used for young children you know um and was hung above their crates or beds so native american culture believes that both good and bad dreams fill the air at night and dream catchers was more like um a web that can trap the bad dreams or the visions while allowing the good ones through the filter and catching the bad dreams and destroying the trapped dreams using the first light of the bonding and i think that's um, the story behind the existence of dream catchers so on the other hand the tree of life is a popular and a universal symbol that represents multiple things across different cultures and religion the symbol does not really belong to one specific culture as it has been used all over the world for centuries so the sacred symbol really signifies different things in both religious and spiritual philosophies but it does have some common representation across multiple cultures which revolves around connection to everything which basically is a representation of interconnectedness of everything in the universe ancestors family and fertility which sort of represents a connection to um their ancestors for one's family you know it also represents growth and strength as the tree and the tree stands tall and strong it also sort of represents individuality because every um tree you know symbolizes as an individual's um uniqueness because every tree is you know different in how it looks and cannot be replicated exactly so i think it represents that it also represents immortality and rebirth because um as trees lose their leaves and seem to be dead during the winter you know you would see new buds appear during the spring so i think that represents you know the immortality and it also represents peace because trees have always evoked a sense of calm and peace so it is unsurprising that a tree of life is also a symbol of peacefulness and relaxation so fun fact about the history of tree of life it actually goes back in the ancient times where um it was found as an excavation in turkey which dates back to about 7000 bc but a similar depiction was found in 3000 bc where the symbol 
depicted a pine tree and because pine trees do not die the symbol was believed as the first depiction of um, a tree of life well anyways i hope this dream catcher come tree of life brings in all the positivity and good health and well-being to everybody in the family getting back to the making of our dream catcher once we uh, finished the second round of adding the beads i went ahead and did tie a square knot so basically to tie a square knot you would need four strings and i start with the leftmost string all the way going to the right and I take the leftmost string out of the set of four strings and it goes over the second and third but under the fourth string and the fourth string goes under the second and third but through the loop between the first and second string and then I hold the second and third string in place and I push the first and the last string and I tighten it to form the knot and basically I just repeat the same in the other order which is basically now the fourth string goes over the second and third but under the first string and the first string goes under the second and third but through the loop between the third and the fourth string and then again holding the middle two strings as it is I'm pulling the two ends of the string which is the first and the fourth string to tie the knot and that forms your first box knot gosh that was quite a mouthful I hope you guys followed me and if not just you know add a comment and I'm happy to explain it to you in the comment section so I did that pretty much to all of the strings that I had and I wanted to again add some more dimension so I went ahead and I did another round of the box knot the only difference here though is I left the first two strings of the first box knot and I tied two box knots together basically using two strings of each of the box knots and this is how I did that also a thing to note is this time I didn't pull the two ends too hard because I like the, the small loop that it created um, and I wanted to keep it that way so as you can see there is the the two petal sort of a look um, and I wanted to keep it that way so the second box knot wasn't tightened enough for reason to get that pattern again here you can tie some other knots if you would prefer and if you want to get a design that um, is similar to like a spiral knot or uh, any other knots you can check out my uh, macrame videos that I have in this playlist and probably grab some of those um, ideas and implement it on your dream catcher I think that's going to look fab as well I'm also going to add the links to these videos in the upper right hand corner so if you don't see a pop-up on your screen you can click the I button underneath the video and you will get all the links in there So once I finished all the box notes I just straightened out the ropes and next I went ahead and I randomly grouped these ropes to form the small branches for the tree and I took the thinner rope that I had and I just tied them together and I tied them for a length that I desired for um, representing the smaller branches of the tree and all of this is just vague I'm just looking for something that looks proportionate correct um, and you can do the same so there is no primary reason for me to 
choose the set of strings and ropes that I have so you could just do as you feel um, makes the most sense to you I would like to hear from you guys if there is anything in your mind that you would want me to try out as a DIY project I am happy to experiment and um, also see if you guys have some interesting ideas that I can implement um, as my next DIY project so please feel free to flood in your comments in the comments section and let me know if there's something interesting um, DIY home decor project that you would want me to try out I would be really happy to give it a go Once I finished tying all the small branches, I cut off all the extra hanging rope and I took the thin rope again and I just tied all the small branches together and then I glued the larger or the thicker rope over it to form the main trunk of the tree. So when you're ready to glue the thicker rope, you want to make sure that you start by gluing it to the back. So you have to decide which side of the dream catcher would be the back of your dream catcher and then just loop around and add the glue to the ropes to secure it in place. Next, as you can see, I haven't really gone around with the thicker rope all the way till the end of the embroidery hoop and that's because I wanted to spread out the remaining part of the thinner rope to represent the sort of under the ground roots of the tree so what I did was I randomly just tied these ropes to thinner ones so you don't have to really tie all the ropes if you do not want to and just cut off any extra hanging ropes and that's totally fine as well. So next I went with the darker beads to sort of represent the underground roots and I added those beads to all of the ropes that I had and then I followed it with some of the white beads that I had from before and I didn't really have um, the right sizes but I just went ahead um, randomly distributing the different sizes that I had so that it looks proportionate. So once you're done adding the beads to the remaining part of the rope, I had to see if the length of the ropes that were left uh, was the length I wanted for the dream catcher and unfortunately it was too short at some places and too long at the other places so what I did was I just ended up adding some extra rope and the way I did that was just gluing some extra rope to the ends of the smaller leftover um, rope strings and then what I did was I did cut the U shape that you have for the dream catcher but I didn't essentially go crazy with um, the exact shape just because I adjusted the shape with the feathers so basically if you would want it to be a little shorter just um, glue the feather a little further up and if you want a certain uh, place where the the length has to be a little longer then you can just glue the feather to the tip of the rope to get that longer edge so I just did that and it looked perfectly fine so you can do the same trick 
if you don't want to go crazy over um, being accurate about it. So one way to get that U shape was to essentially find the center strings. So I found the center four strings and I glued the feathers at the same length for the middle four strings. So now I'm actually tying a knot at the end because I didn't want um, the beads to run past the rope. But later I realized that I could have just added some glue to secure the beads in place and I think it was uh, the most easiest way to get about um, the same height for the beads as well. So I ended up doing that eventually but um, in the beginning I just um, tied a little, little knot. That's how it looks after all the feathers were glued to the dream catcher. I absolutely loved the way the stream catcher has turned out, especially adding the white feathers was something I was debating to myself. But I think the color coordination and the, the beige and the natural color goes really well with the white feathers. And I think it really looks amazing. Let me know if you guys liked it as well in the comment section and leave a big thumbs up if you did. The last thing was creating a little loop where you could hang the dream catcher on so i just used a small jute rope and i checked if it was standing balanced and straight and uh, that's pretty much it mm -hmm.